Welcome to Podcast 5.3, and this is where we learn how to start talking like a chemist. You've heard me say names of formulas, and we've written down formulas, and uh, this is the time where we're going to start talking like a chemist. We're going to name some basic ionic compounds. Now, you guys know what ions are, and all this binary, don't let these words freak you out or anything, all that binary means is bi means two. So we're going to name some compounds that are made up of just two ions, a cation and an anion. There's some real basic rules for naming them, and once you have it down, uh, you'll be speaking like a chemist in no time. So let's look at the first rule. For the cations, um, it's a really simple rule. Look at this. They have their name, all right? Uh, so a potassium ion is called potassium, and an aluminum ion is called aluminum. Now, this only pertains for those elements that we know uh, their charge. For example, what I mean by that is we know that all group 1 elements, the alkali metals, always form plus 1, the alkaline earth always form plus 2, and aluminum's group always forms plus 3. All right? So we just call them by name. So anything in here, lithium, sodium, potassium, calcium, strontium, barium, aluminum, gallium, indium, we just call them by their name. So that's a really uh, easy rule to remember. And for example, if you think about uh, the name for, for table salt, it's sodium chloride. So you've already kind of seen that. Now where it gets a little messy is when we get to the transition section of the periodic table. Oops. Oh, I... Um, the transition metals, there's a couple different problems. And one of the problems is, is uh, this thing right here. Look at that. Remember that last podcast where we talked about how many of the transition elements form more than one cation? Well, that leads me to a problem. For example, I can't go iron chloride and iron chloride. I, there's got to be a way for me to tell the difference. What if I say copper bromide? Well, which one? Is it copper 1, right? Or is it copper 2? What if I say chromium phosphate? Well, what am I talking about? Am I talking about chromium with a plus 3 charge or chromium with a plus 2 charge? So this causes a big problem. It's probably one of the more confusing things that students have to deal with because we've got to come up with a way of telling the difference between this iron with a plus two, oops, I've lost my pen there, iron with a plus two or iron with a plus three. All right, so let's just briefly go over what the, what the situation is. If you'll notice right here, what we do is if it's an iron with a plus two, we call it iron two. Again, like all cations, you just use the name, but iron with a plus three is called iron three. This is the Roman numeral for 3. This is the Roman numeral for 2. Now, these other two words, this ferrous and ferric, okay? O-U-S used to mean for the uh, the smallest charge and ick meant for the greater charge. And we just don't have to deal with that anymore. I put that in as an example because you may see those. You may hear something called ferric chloride or ferrous chloride, and I don't want you to panic. It's still the same thing, but that... That type of uh, naming system or nomenclature is not really used anymore. So let's look at this. What would I call uh, a copper with a plus one charge? Okay, I would call it copper, Roman numeral one, right? What about something like uh, chromium? Oops, chromium with a three charge, right? Well, we would call it chromium 3. Okay? So there you go. Now, the thing I want to really stress is that this Roman numeral does not tell you how many atoms. It only tells you the charge. Because we're going to see, let me write a couple formulas, something like this, Cu, Cl, uh, 2, or you might see Cr, 207, something like that. This does not correspond to the Roman numeral. All right, it's really important that you understand it. The Roman numeral tells me, maybe I should write that. The Roman number 
tells. Tells the charge. Okay, I can't stress that enough. If you get if you hear me fired up in class, kind of screaming and ranting and raving about that, it's because too often kids will think that that Roman numeral tells them how many atoms there are. Please don't make that mistake. All right, and I want to do I do want to address this up here. Look at this. Tra this is for the transition metals, right? I want to also mention this pertains to lead and tin. Okay, let's look at the periodic table. I've already put in red uh, the transition section. As you guys know, it's the D block, right? But it turns out that tin and lead, they, they form also either a plus 2 or a plus 4. So I've kind of included them. If you want to put a box around the transition and a box around tin and lead, then go ahead, all right? But it's important that you understand, if you are ever dealing with a metal that is in this group right here, or tin and lead, we've got to give it a Roman numeral. And the reason why is this. Look at all those different charges. Look at indium. It's got three different common charges. We have no idea which one it is, so we got to make sure that we know. All right? Hopefully that makes a little sense. So we've got, if it's just one of the metals that we know, uh, those three... Rows uh, 1, 3, and uh, 13, then we, we just give them the name, right? If it's a transition metal, we have to give them a Roman numeral designating the charge. Now, the second thing, remember, we're talking about a binary ionic compound, right? That means a plus ion and a negative ion coming together. Right? So we've taken care of the positive charge. Well, let's take care of the negative charge because that's actually where there is going to be a little bit of change. For anions, it's a pretty simple change. You just take the end of the name and you add an IDE ending. All right. So that's why uh, table salt is sodium chloride. So we add that I. Instead of sodium chlorine, we're going to call it sodium chloride. Instead of oxygen, we're going to call it oxide. Now, the nice thing about this is we're only talking about a very few number of elements, right? They're in this group right here in the nonmetal section. So just say it with me. Fluoride, chloride, bromide, iodide, telluride, selenide, sulfide, oxide, nitride, Phosphide. So you get the you get the idea. It's only a very few uh, of these elements. All right, just right in here, that little non-metal section. Okay, so we give the anion an IDE ending. The cation we just give it its name. If it is in this section, this middle section right here, we give it a Roman numeral. Do you got that? Well, let's try it. Take a moment, pause the video, and see how you do. All right. Hopefully you got this. Now, I'm going to call this strontium, S-T-R-O-N, strontium oxide, right? Gallium nitride. Lithium Chlor, right. Boy, this is almost fun, isn't it? Vanadium, ooh, wait. Where is vanadium on the periodic table? Hey, look at that. Vanadium's right there in the transition section. What do I have to do in the, if it's in the transition? I've got to give it a Roman numeral because I don't know its charge. All right? So hopefully you did this. You did something like, ooh, this is tricky. Now look at this. If we know selenium's charge, selenium's got a charge of uh, minus 2, right? This is a little tricky. And maybe this is not the best one to go over. Selenium has a, a, a minus 2 charge, and there's three of them. So what is that total? Negative 6, right?
So if I have minus 6, I have to have plus 6 to make sure this is a neutral compound, right? Well, two vanadiums make a total of plus 6. So that means it's kind of like uh, 2 times x equals 6, right? And therefore, x must equal 3. See how useful algebra is? So this is vanadium, 1, 2, 3, selenide. selenide. Now, if you got that one, pat yourself on the back, because that was a little challenging. All right, so that was a kind of a challenging one. Let's look at the next one. We've got a chromium up there, and we've got an iodine. All right. Um, chromium, what do we know about chromium? Well, it's over here in the transition section, right? So what does that tell you? That tells me I have to use a Roman numeral. So it's chromium. And then what's the charge? Well, look at this. We know that iodine, a halogen, is always minus 1, right? So if I've got something that's a total, a, a minus 1, there's 3 of them, I must have a minus 3 total, right? Well, I have to have a plus 3 because it has to be neutral. So this is chromium 1, 2, 3, iodide, right? The next one, PBO, ooh, lead. Remember that box we put around it? We don't know lead's charge. It's either 2 or 4. Well, what do we know about oxygen? Oxygen's charge is always minus 2, and this thing has to be neutral. So I know that's always minus 2, therefore this must be plus 2. So this is lead 2 oxide, right? Zinc right here. Again, I don't know its charge, but I could figure it out from the anion. Fluorine's always minus 1. There's two of them. That means there's a minus two, so this must be plus two. Okay, so zinc. Oops. Zinc, Roman numeral two. And just as an aside, if we look over at this one, even though zinc's in the transition, it always forms a plus two. So if you called it zinc fluoride, I would be okay with that, but just for our practice, for our purposes, we're going to go ahead and just use the Roman numeral. All right, barium. Where do I find barium on the periodic table? Oh, it's over here. It's always a plus 2. So I'm just going to call it barium bromide. All right, so there you go. I don't know how you did. Hopefully you did this. Okay, now just one more um, reminder about this, why we use the Roman numeral thing. All right. If you notice, for all the uh, formulas that we use, the Roman numeral, right? This one, and this one, and this one, and then this one. If you don't tell me the Roman numeral, I could not write the formula. If you say to me strontium oxide, I have no problem writing SRO because I know the charges of both strontium and oxygen. However, if you say chromium iodide, that's a problem. Okay, because chromium uh, is, oops, pardon me for a second. All right, sorry about that. had a little technical malfunction with the pad. But anyways, uh, so if, if you don't tell me the, the, the charge, I, I couldn't tell you. If you said chromium iodide, I know that it could be this, CRI2 and CRI3. So chromium iodide is not good enough. You have to tell me the charge because of this little situation right here. The fact that you get a, more than one charge for these transition metals. Very, very important. All right. 